After 64 years, the identity of the four-year-old child who was found murdered inside a cardboard box in 1957, known as the boy in the box, has been discovered. Let me tell you the whole story from the beginning. But before we dive into the story, feel free to hit the subscribe button to support us. In Philadelphia, a man used to set traps for rabbits and squirrels in a place near the street and usually people throw rubbish in that place. One day, he saw a box near him. He went to see what was inside this box, but to his shock, he found a little boy. Fear intensified in the man and he quickly fled from the place. He told no one what he had seen, especially the authorities, for fear of being accused of the crime or of getting into legal trouble. Those days were tragic for the man. Every day he imagined that the authorities would enter and arrest him. After a while, a young man was walking near the area when he spotted a rabbit running. He then noticed a large cardboard box in front of the rubbish, so he decided to take a closer look. To his horror, inside the box, he found the lifeless body of a child, Joseph. In shock, he quickly left the scene and hurried back to his house. He was too afraid to tell anyone about what he had seen, but after two days of consideration, he mustered up the courage to tell his parents. Immediately, they summoned the authorities to investigate the scene. After the police arrived at the scene, they found the boy already dead with bruises and minor wounds on his head. Upon examination, the forensic doctor discovered that the child was between three and four years old with a thin appearance and smaller than average size for his age. His body was very clean and he had a new haircut, but there were signs of abuse, bruises, minor cuts and other signs of physical trauma. The evidence led the police to conclude that the child had been beaten by a criminal. The forensic doctor then performed an autopsy to determine the cause of death. For the entire period that the child was with the forensic doctor, no one informed the authorities in the area of his disappearance, making it difficult to identify the child. The authorities took pictures of the child and published them everywhere in Philadelphia, as well as sending them to other states across America in an attempt to find someone who could recognize the boy. Regrettably, no family or person was able to identify the poor child. Thus, the case quickly became an increasingly complex one for the authorities to solve. The only hope left for the police to identify the boy was to take his fingerprints and compare them to those of maternity hospitals in the city, but unfortunately, no match was found. This leaves two possible explanations. The child was born in another state or was born at home. Uncovering the truth behind the child's death became a much more complicated case. The authorities tried to exploit any evidence that might lead them to the criminal who killed the poor child. They traced the source of the cardboard box in which the young child was placed. Through the information and the serial number contained in the carton, the authorities discovered that the box is being sold in a store near that area in Philadelphia. They went directly to the store, with the aim of investigating the store owner and discovering the identity of the one who bought that cardboard box. The child's mystery was soon deciphered, as he told the store owner that he did not remember identifying the person who bought the box, because many people bought it during that period, and they all paid in cash meaning there is no information on the buyers. Here, the authorities lost hope to solve the case of the poor child and then left his case open. After that, they buried the little child's body in a special cemetery for the unknown body in 1957. Then they named the child, who is about four years old, the boy in the box, due to the fact that his real name was not known. Almost 41 years after being found in 1957, authorities began reinvestigating the mysterious case of the child's identity by exhuming his body from the cemetery and taking DNA samples. Despite many attempts and experiments to identify the child, there was no success. 
The child was then respectfully reburied in the cemetery, leaving the case among the cold cases. The child was remembered fondly by many, who often visited his grave to decorate it with flowers. Although the mystery remains unsolved, the child's memory lives on in the hearts of all those who remember him. After 65 years since the mysterious death of a poor child, the authorities did not forget his case. Despite the long period of time that has passed, the authorities have kept the case open until the end of 2022, determined to uncover the identity of the deceased child. The authorities took permission from a court to exhume his body for the second time, where DNA techniques and technology developed, and finally they discovered his identity, where the child's real name is Joseph Augustus Sorelli, and he is from one of the families whose parents are now deceased, but he has brothers who did not say the name of his real siblings. The authorities have not yet achieved their main goal, which is to know the real criminal who killed the child. This makes it almost impossible to bring justice to Joseph Augustus Sorelli now, as the criminal is likely to have passed away over the years. And who knows, one of his parents might be the one who killed him. If you have any questions, put them in the comment below the video. Watch this video, which contains facts and secrets about the story of the youngest victim of the infamous serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, that you have not heard before. Don't miss out on this powerful and moving story.